Say good morning to the Attorney General of the state, Patrick Morrissey. Good morning, Patrick. How are you? I'm doing well. You guys are, are pretty funny. When I hear Wallaby, that, that's a shoe, is it? A sh- he says a, a, a shoe. A shoe. I, I, that's a, like a, I think it's a, some kind of Australian animal, animal. of some sort. I have no, no idea what it is or what it looks like. I think it's also a shoe. All you right. know, I think you're right. I think I've seen that. Either way. Well, once again, you guys are always raising the thought-provoking issues of the day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 100%. Hey, uh, correct, sir, Mr. Morrissey, you are correct. Clark's Men's Wallaby Boots. Oh, yeah. I've just looked them up online. Yeah, they're the the really cool uh, tan, uh, those those kind of ankle oh, highs. Those are pretty nice. Boots. Good looking yeah. boot. Very good. As, as boots go. Yeah. Go. Uh, Patrick, uh, we know about your tennis background. Um, what about uh, golfing background? You ever do any caddying? You know, not much of a no. Not much of a golfer. Uh, I focused a lot on tennis. I used to actually run cross country uh, when I was younger. Run and bike and. In high school, I wrestled. I won't tell you what weight I wrestled. <laughs> Come on. Long, it's, Give it up. It's many, many pounds to go. 112? 108. 108? Wow. Yeah. How I old were you? So yep. it's, uh, time flies, but, yeah, uh, I used to run a lot, and uh, I was – I think I graduated uh, – boy, I think I graduated high school maybe at about 130. I was pretty, pretty thin. You – Care to share what you hit the scale at now? No, I do not. Care. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we all agree with him. I'm not sharing my weight either. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I do not. A for, a for effort. That's good the way you did it. it you almost threw it out of me. <laughs> hey, let's uh, let's talk about Google. Uh, Google's on trial. Uh, um, it, it's kind of fascinating what's what's going on with them there. But you've also got some word of a settlement to share too. We do. So we just recently announced, along with uh, 51 other attorneys general, uh, an agreement with Google. But this time, uh, the conduct arose out of the Google Play Store. And uh, we've been working on this issue for a few years, and it focused on how Google was allegedly harming consumers through its monopoly power in the Android app market. And so uh, when you go on to get an app, if you have a monopoly with that, when you're playing these games and you inflate your prices, uh, we obviously argue that that raises antitrust issues. So uh, some of the details are not going to be out for another uh, 30 days. They're going to get submitted to the court for approval. But the bottom line is that uh, there needs to be vigorous competition in all the markets that we have. And we thought that uh, Google uh, was thought it was too big to play by the rules, and we uh, were pleased to, to resolve this. They are right now looking at an antitrust trial, too, regarding their search engine. Does any of that filter its way down to the states, Patrick? You know, some, some of it certainly does. Uh, without going into too many details, there are a number of other cases or uh, reviews being done of Google and some of the other big tech companies. Uh, but uh, obviously, I think the one you're referencing is on the federal side mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to the, the trial uh, on the state side. So I think that's that's where things are. But there are a number of instances where we've been looking at Google's behavior over the years. So. In general, what we're undergoing now as consumers is this massive selling of our private information that most of us have not consented to give up. And then we learned last week or week before that car companies were some of the more automakers, more egregious offenders of this as well. We learned they were also selling uh, our information. Uh, do we have any options as consumers for this? Look, I think that we have to be mindful of trying to put protections in place so that uh, these big companies don't just get access to your material, especially a lot of these companies that are effectively operating as a monopolist, and they get your material and they're selling it, they're making money. I think that there's going to have to be a very real and robust discussion about how to better protect privacy, uh, because we've gotten to the point where so much of the data gets compromised. I mean, there's some things that we're going to be announcing soon where we know that there have been real problems in terms of breaches and issues. And I think there's one that's going to come out fairly soon where 
uh, we know that simply by having a lot of this data, a lot of the hackers go in and they're able to clip the personal identifiable information. And that could set up a, a huge amount of problems for consumers. So number one, I think that the, the best thing you can do is be very weary about how much you're giving your personal identifiable information away. And two, I do think that this is an area that Congress is going to have to look at a lot more closely than it has over the years. It's, it's a growing problem. Yeah, Patrick, it, it seems anymore, any store that you go to, number one, they want to have their own little card, right? So you can get special discounts. And so in order to get that, you're giving them personal information. They want your name and your your uh, you know address and phone numbers and an email, how they can contact you and all of those kind of things. Uh, are, do we kind of walk into some of this in a way that because we know we might get a discount here or there or just because you're at the cash register and they want to know, well, hey, we need your name and telephone number number. Uh, do, do we walk into that? Do I have a right at that cash register to go, uh, no, uh, I'm just giving you five bucks. Give me my candy bar. <laughs> well, look, you, you do have that right. Uh, I think what some of these companies do is they set up a differential pricing for when you're using their card or you might get some rebate back when you get their credit card. I mean, I will tell you on a personal level, I've always counseled to minimize the total number of credit cards that you rely on because the more you have, the more apt you are to get your information stolen. And you know, people might have a couple different credit cards, but if you have eight, nine, 10, just think about the prospects and what happens when you're using all those different cards and the vulnerability you have. So look, uh, I think these are issues that are going to have to get even more discussion, especially as we're moving to this world where People are paying in digital currency, and uh, I was traveling recently, and I think I was flying through the New York airport, and New York, for instance, only accepted uh, credit card or digital, and you have to sign up. You have to provide your uh, email address. You have to provide information, and I think a lot of people correctly find that repulsive uh, because you couldn't use cash, and I think that's going to be another big debate. I know you know, looking and wearing my other hat on the campaign side, I think as governor, I'm going to have to be working and, and pushing back against all these efforts to just have a purely digital uh, economy. I think that's a real concern, especially because of the privacy issues. On Mike Cash, it says this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. I take that to mean that if I incur any debt by buying something, that this is a legal way to pay for it. So how can you tell me I can't use this to pay for something? I'm sorry, I, I don't understand your question. Are you saying for you personally, or yes. are you saying... Yeah, on, on my... So on I'm my not saying you can't. No, I'm, I'm not questioning you. I'm questioning how a retailer can tell me right. I can't use cash oh. to pay for something when it says on my $20 bill that this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. It doesn't say... No, look, I, I think that there are going to be some challenges to yeah. this coming up. As I said, uh, when you have situations where people are going through, I gave the airport as an example, I think it was LaGuardia, and you can't use cash. And I was not the only one in the airport who was reluctant to just give away personal identifiable information and you talk to people up there and people are kind of scratching their head so it's a huge issue you saw in florida uh, that the governor there was trying to uh, ensure that a uh, central digital currency uh, that that was going to be banned down there now that's on a statewide obviously currency is a is a federal issue and it's going to take a lot of effort both on the federal and the state side to sort through this. But I think you're right, real serious concerns here in terms of how this is going to uh, go forward in the future. What, wasn't it Yogi Berra that said on uh, some uh, advertisement a few years back, cash, it's just as good as money, right? So it's... <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, let me, let me just go a little farther with this. Cyber attacks, cyber problems. We had a we had a thing last year where the the computer system for the schools here in Berkeley County went down for a while. What happens if everything monetarily or most things monetarily are all, you know, cyber and everything's in the cloud and 
it all goes down. We have some sort of a cyber attack, you know, from from hackers or a foreign government or, or what have you. And then all of a sudden, everybody's like, well, what do we what do we do now? Well, I, I know what I do. I'm going to spend cash. But if we're not allowed to or we can't or we don't, what well, no, what that's, happens? That's, why that's, that's not acceptable, right? And, and let's even take something that's not as pernicious as a cyber attack. Let's say that you have a credit card and someone gains access to it. Traditionally, credit card companies are going to put a pause on your system, mm-hmm. right? Well, imagine you're traveling and you only have one credit card. And you literally are frozen, and you if you don't have the ability to use cash, that could be a serious problem uh, because it could take some time to unfreeze the accounts. Well, so I, I think these are things we really are going to be grappling with, and I know I am very concerned about protecting consumer privacy and not forcing them into transactions that they don't want to be involved in. So I will be speaking out on this. You know, we're looking at a lot of the different issues uh, in terms of our office and also for, you know, the other work that I'm doing in terms of the campaign to make sure that West Virginia is going to be known to standing up to a lot of these efforts to make it easier to clip your personal privacy. Rick Manning just posted on our Facebook page, WVU sporting venues in 2024 will be cashless. So there you, the biggest institution in the state mm-hmm. is not going to be accepting cash. We're trying to eliminate, um, you know, the, the five-finger discount where some people put a little bit of cash in their pockets maybe. I don't I don't know. I mean, I, I did. I saw something a while back where it said truly the only way to keep from having your credit stolen and, and your identity stolen and stuff like that is just to be completely impecunious. I mean, if you are broke and you have a 400 credit rating, you have nothing to worry about. But for the rest of us who work and do everything else, all of this is scary, Patrick. You're lucky Bill Stubblefield's not on the show today with you throwing out the word impecunious, by the way. Because he'd try to pronounce that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a question for you from uh, Eric O'Rourke, uh, who posted uh, this question. Ask Patrick his opinion on Missouri versus Biden that came out Friday. He says, huge win for free speech. Yeah, I know that there's been a lot of effort to ensure that uh, the Biden administration is not going to be uh, weighing in and interfering, engaging in censorship. And so uh, obviously that's something that we've been very supportive of. Uh, but, you know, I, we're, we're looking through, we're analyzing that uh, case because I think that the, the bottom line is we want to make sure that there are going to be no opportunities to uh, for government to come in and to censor people. And I know that this was filed a couple of years ago. I think it was originally initiated by um, Eric Schmidt and Jeff Landry. And so we obviously have been very supportive, but there have been a lot of um, assertions and I think proving correct that the government, the federal government, uh, was in close contact with social media uh, and they were putting pressure, which would amount to a violation of free speech. And uh, that's a big no-no. You can't have the government dictating what you can and can't say and especially when you're trying to censor information that's viewed as critical to the leader of the federal government, in this case, the president of the United States. So uh, we think that these are good cases. They're important cases. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that the courts are agreeing. Attorney General Patrick Morrissey, our guest, can we uh, can we ask you a couple of governor candidate questions? You can ask me whatever you want. All right. So you have to help me out on this one because I'm confused about the polling results. I read one poll where you were so far ahead, they're going to call off the election. And then I saw another poll that you were trailing uh, one of your opponents. Uh, do you have polling data that shows you where you are at this time? Yeah, so it's interesting. Let me uh, walk through kind of the recent news of the day, uh, because I think we had called out one of the polls for being a, a fake poll. And because we were we thought it was very different than what we've seen. Uh, we, we've heard about a number of polls that we think show us uh, ahead. But I, I want to emphasize to everyone listening, in reality, the polls don't matter much this early because I think what matters is your record, the structure of the race, and the support that you're you're earning. And so I think we're doing well. We're working hard. I think people recognize that uh, it's not a close call in terms of the record of accomplishment that we have comparatively to uh, other candidates that are running. But there was an instance last week where uh, someone or two weeks ago where someone came out with a poll 
And we knew that it was wrong, so we actually asked for the methodology, and we questioned it. And anytime you have a, a, a news media uh, entity involved, uh, we take that very seriously because people, these polls have real-life consequences in terms of impacting uh, the campaign. So we questioned it, and actually after we questioned it and pushed back really hard, for the first time I've ever seen in my life, they changed the poll because apparently they had allowed Democrats' uh, preferences to count in the Republican primary. And that obviously uh, benefited uh, one of my opponents. And so uh, they, they showed this guy with a big lead, but we knew that was wrong. I don't know what the right number is. I think we're in a really strong position. I, I feel good about the race, uh, but we were very uh, pleased that they acknowledged they made a mistake. We think that uh, this is going to be uh, a good opportunity for the state to get someone who's a proven conservative, very experienced, and who can really make a big difference moving the needle. So, uh, But it was interesting. We caught that big error in the poll. They acknowledged it. And uh, I think that people know that we're in a good spot. How do they think they were getting that by the attorney general? Come on. <laughs> well, right. I mean, people got mad at me for calling it a fake poll. But guess what? <laughs> it was a fake poll. And so we knew that. And it, it, when you see these things pop up, and I'm a big believer that everyone, you need to be accountable. And so you guys have me on. You asked me about squirrels. You asked me about Supreme Court. You asked me about all sorts of wild questions. And. I try to do my best answering the question, and you throw your curveballs from time to time. But you know, the media needs to be accountable for the work that they do, too, or pollsters have to be accountable for what they're doing. So when you see an issue or you see a problem, you guys know this. I'm not afraid to step up and say, now, whoa, that's a real issue, and we have to say no to that. And that's what happened here, and uh, that's the person I am as AG. And as governor, I'm not going to let a big error just go by the wayside, and we're not going to point to it. We're going to make sure people know the truth of what's going on in our state and what's happening. And that's how I've been as AG, and I think people expect that kind of behavior. Squirrels can be a real and present danger, oh, so yeah. that is a legal issue, yes. <laughs> well, well, Patrick, actually, I mean, at the... That was, year, that was years and years ago. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I recall. <laughs> it was a squirrel invasion of a garage and refrigerator, I think. At our, at our last break, I actually conducted a poll of, of Matt and uh, Rob and myself, and we determined 100% that this is the greatest radio show in the history of the world. Yes. And it's, you know, we've got all the data. I mean, I've got empirical data. <laughs> It's just, I mean, well, it is, well, pollsters, they affect elections, and it's so easy to bend a poll, and it, it's great that, that you guys jumped on it and said, wait a second, this is wrong. That's, uh, that's phenomenal that you were able to well, get them right, to, to look, change. Uh, I think a lot of the public, they get tired of it. They saw that in the presidential election. They see it in other elections, and, and people rightfully worry that some of these numbers are getting manipulated in order to drive the desired results. And I've seen that before, and, and quite frankly, I saw that this poll uh, actually has been notoriously wrong uh, on a lot of the races I've been involved in. I think back in 2012, when I was first running for AG, they had me down about 24 points, and this was in September. And we knew that that was wrong, but you know the problem is, I think when that poll came out uh, back in 2012, uh, we had people that were going to help us, they were going to fundraise. They said, well, we don't think that we're going to help you anymore because you don't have a good shot of winning. So there are real-life consequences to kind of messing around, especially with campaigns. And that's why when I see it, I'm going to call it out. Uh, but I think folks listening should know uh, we're going to take nothing for granted. I feel really good about our chances. It's the elections in eight months, but uh, most certainly we were able to show that that poll was fake and – uh, I, I think there'll be some other data coming out, which will probably confirm that, I'm guessing, in the upcoming months. You mentioned eight months uh, before that primary. How do you kind of look at, you know, the, your your regular day job right now and then, you know, candidating for an, a new position, but you don't want to get uh, the, the cart ahead of the horse, so to speak. So how do you kind of begin slowly and then wind your way up? Well, I, I think that what you want to do, you always have a duty in your day job. And I take that very seriously, and we still 
are busy at work every single day. Uh, serving as the attorney general is a very real and important job, and you have to make sure you, you stick to it. And uh, I was pretty busy at work <laughs> recently and uh, making sure that everything is being done uh, right. And you want to let the public know that that still remains your top priority. Uh, but you do have an opportunity uh, to get out and about and to talk about your vision for the state. I think a lot of people know that uh, during the month of August, uh, there were a number of times that I was up in the eastern panhandle. And so uh, people were able to see me in the evenings go out to the Berkeley Fair, the Jefferson Fair, and do events across the eastern part of the state. And that worked out very well. We have a Martinsburg office. And, and so I think what you try to do is uh, make sure you're doing your day job, but then you have to uh, put the pieces in place to get the campaign in gear. And early on, that means you have to raise resources. Uh, that means you have to organize and uh, begin uh, going through the endorsement process for a number of different folks. And, and we've been doing that. So we've been getting very good reception. Uh, and I, I'm hopeful that we're going to have another very positive result. AARP, in an article on the West Virginia Metro News website, is reportedly working with West Virginia legislators in regards to some fraud legislation because of the various number of scams that are available uh, out there. And I wonder, Patrick, if you're being consulted on this at all in regards to any future legislation. So we, we do work with the AARP on various uh, initiatives. I'm not familiar with what specific initiative they have now, uh, but I'm sure that before they want to advance it, we'll be sitting down and talking about it, especially if it involves any changes to the consumer protection laws. You know, what's interesting is that protecting consumers applies to the Consumer Protection Division, but it also can apply to a number of other areas as well. For instance, if there's an insurance-related question, uh, the insurance department uh, will deal with that. Or if there's an issue with respect to the Public Service Commission, uh, it could be your landline phone. We actually don't have jurisdiction over that. That would be the PSC. If it's an issue pertaining to security, that would be the state auditor. So you want to make sure that you're on top of it and you're monitoring this. We do try to serve as a clearinghouse for uh, consumers across the board that if they happen to get the entity wrong that they're trying to file a complaint with, we want to make their life a little bit easier. So frequently, some of these insurance questions or PSC questions will refer to the right person in another uh, entity in order to make sure that people can get some help. And I think that's critical as well. Patrick, thank you so much for your time this morning. Final thought is yours. You know, I'm looking forward to joining you in the studio and spend a little bit more time. Uh, I'm always grateful. I had a wonderful time uh, spending a uh, couple of days back in the Eastern Panhandle and, and meeting with some wonderful folks. So uh, I'm excited. I think I'm coming back this weekend uh, for some events, maybe trying to work out how I can do both the WVU pit game and come back uh, for some events in Berkeley County. So uh, maybe we'll run into you there. Thank you very much, Patrick. Always a pleasure. Thanks. Be well, guys.